What is the NIST cybersecurity framework? How do I use the NIST cybersecurity framework? And what's new in the 2.0 version? I spent all day last Friday pouring over it. And in this video, I'm going to break the NIST cybersecurity framework down. So by the end, you will understand what it is and the overall approach to implementing it. And probably the most important part, what's new in version two? Spoiler alert, it's a massive improvement in several key areas. Let's go. So what is the NIST Cybersecurity Framework? The NIST Cybersecurity Framework is a voluntary information security guide developed through the public-private sector collaboration by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which we'll be calling NIST the rest of the show, to help organizations improve their cyber practices. Now, the framework is designed to be flexible, allowing organizations of all sizes and industries to apply it in a way that best suits their specific needs and risks, which is where we discover our first major change to the framework. You see, the NIST CSF, or Cybersecurity Framework, was originally developed in response to Executive Order 13636, which was titled Improving Critical Infrastructure Cybersecurity, which was issued by President Barack Obama back in 2013. Now, the executive order called for the development of a voluntary framework to help critical infrastructure organizations manage cyber risk. And it really aimed to promote the adoption of practices that would increase the security and resilience of the nation's critical infrastructure against cyber threats, right? But it was so awesome. And so many practitioners and organizations saw the value in the framework. So there was a massive adoption and saw widespread reach across industry, organization sizes, and different countries. So with version 2.0, we see the name change to shed the critical infrastructure aspect and be applicable to all organizations, right? Now you might be saying like, cool, brah, they changed the name of the document, woo! But that's just a small aspect that hints at the larger picture of the significant changes, like the community profiles, the organization profile templates, the collection of quick start guides that they got. But before we dig into this, some of you may not understand how to use the NIST cybersecurity framework. And these these improvements won't make any sense. So let's explain how to use the NIST CSF really quickly. The NIST CSF is organized by six functions now, it used to be five, uh, with Govern being the newest one in version 2.0. The organization's cybersecurity risk management strategy, expectations and policies are established and communicated and monitored in the Govern function. By the way, these move from like left to right. So Govern, identify and protect are left of boom or bad stuff happening. Detect, respond and recover are right of boom after bad happens. Identify is ensuring that the organization's current cyber Cyber risks are understood. The protect is ensuring safeguards are in place to manage the organization's cyber risks. Detect is now like when bad's happening and it's to ensure that possible cyber attacks and compromises are found and analyzed. Respond focuses on actions regarding detected cyber incidents are taken and then recovery is where assets and operations affected by an incident are restored back to kind of normal operating procedures. Now the NIST CSF is not a prescriptive framework that says, for example, use text messages for multi-factor authentication. That would be way, way too prescriptive. But documents desirable outcomes for an organization's InfoSec program across 21 categories and 112 subcategories under that. So for example, under asset management, there's the ID, which is the identify function, AM, which is the asset management, dash zero one subcategory. So ID AM zero one that states, inventories of hardware managed by an org are maintained. It's a simple outcome. This makes sense. It's solid information security control. And an outcome is to know what hardware you have in your environment and you have processes for adding, updating, removing hardware. And this is great as an outcome, but you may be asking yourself, like, how do you get this outcome? So NIST has provided cross references to popular security control catalogs and introduced another banger of a new feature, which is small, but I would argue mighty. And this is implementation examples. And really quick, just to go back to cross reference, I'm not seeing a cross reference currently on NIST CSF 2.0 to like uh, NIST 853 and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm sure they're coming or I just didn't find them. But let's talk about implementation examples. This is hugely valuable and wicked impactful, okay? The hardware inventory outcome we covered may be obvious on how to achieve it, but some outcomes could be vague and problematic to understand how you would achieve it, right? And you might be like, oh, you implement it wrong or you just skip it or you're like, I don't get this, let's move on. So the examples provide clarity the same way the rest of a sentence might help you understand what a word is that you don't know, right? So for example, let's look at PR, which is the protect function, AA, which is the access and authentication, which is a new category, by the way, uh, dash zero two that says identities are proof and bound to credentials based on the context of interactions. Now, you might be like, what the hell? What does that mean? But the 
One implementation example that they provide states require multi-factor authentication. Now there's like four examples they get, but I just picked one that's obvious. Require multi-factor authentication. That is prescriptive. It's very clear what we're doing. And you can see, okay, depending on what user and what resource they're trying to access, the level of authentication would change to be appropriate. So like if you're logging into your machine at work on the work network, maybe you only have username and password, but if you're remote, maybe that's when you introduce the multi-factor authentication, right? It's based on context of interactions. Brilliant! So to implement the NIST CSF, you outline all 112 subcategories and assess which ones you're achieving, which ones you're not, and this is the gap. And also, if uh, some do not apply, which can sometimes happen, you can remove those, right? So once you have your current state and your target state, uh, where you are today and where you want to go, you put a plan together on how to achieve that target state, right? Get an order of operations, budget for resources, then you execute. You can't go from here to your target state in one day, right? Like you've got to do it over time, typically. It takes time, money, people, Etc. So you got to get a plan. This is like really an oversimplification on how you would implement NIST CSF, but the overall approach is how you would go to to actually implement and achieve that. If you want to go a little deeper, look at tiers. NIST doesn't, for some reason, like to call them maturity tiers, but that's basically what they are. They have maturity tiers and different levels of you know implementation strength. But by using the NIST CSF, you can move towards a holistic cybersecurity risk reduction and be able to effectively communicate up and down the organization about security policy and gaps. But you may say, Jerry, leadership doesn't speak tech or cyber and communicating is hard to them. So the NIST CSF has another 2.0 improvement to drop on your head, clearer language. Now, while not exhaustively updated to be non-technical, there was an obvious effort to me for the language in the CSF framework to be improved, right? The framework category, subcategories, the outcomes, everywhere they improve the language. And this lends to easier communication among all stakeholders, right? So PRIP 1, 1.1 reads, or it did, this is in 1.1, it's gone now, but a baseline configuration of information technology, industrial control systems is created and maintained incorporating security principles, e.g. concept of least functionality, right? Now, the entire category of PRIP is gone, but there's one called PR.PS that looks to have absorbed parts of PRIP, right? And PRPS1 says, configuration management practices are established and applied. Simple, clean, mm, chef's kiss. And they give some implementation examples that would make it even clearer on how to achieve this outcome, right? It's perfect. So we've covered what NIST CSF is and how to implement it and some of the great changes that we're seeing in 2.0, but let's just knock out what you need to know about the new version of NIST CSF. First of all, the new function govern. This is right on the cover of the document. It's plain as day. You can see it right there, right? Doink! It's the donut that goes around. Hold on, Jerry. Ah! It's the donut that goes all around the thing, right? Like, boom. Identify, protect, detect is all around it, and then the govern is kind of the glue that holds it together. Now, it's a new function, and many of its subcategory outcomes will look familiar though, right? So it's new, but it's not really new. It's just kind of a re reshaping of existing subcategories and outcomes. So aspects like roles and responsibilities, oversight, policy, senior leadership, risk management strategy, these are all in the govern function now, but they were previously represented, sprinkled throughout the CSF in different areas. So bundling it up and giving its own cross-cut function to me is a brilliant move, uh, kind of to be the glue of the whole security operations and more importantly, to visually convey to non-technical leadership how they fit into the overall implementation. GRC professionals getting their day in the sun with NIST CSF. Now, before I tell you what I think is the biggest, most impactful change to the NIST CSF, if you're wanting to be a GRC analyst or just level up your GRC analyst knowledge base, check out my GRC analyst masterclass with lectures and hands-on labs and risk policy awareness training. You'll be shining like this new governed function in no time. Head over to simplycyber.io slash GRC to check it out if you're interested. Now, as much as everyone is gaga over a new function in govern, next and I believe the most impactful change to the NIST CSF is the respond and recover functions receiving a massive overhaul. Respond and recover are critical parts of any information security operation, but in NIST CSF 1.1, respond and recover always felt like they weren't given the love that identify, protect, and detect receive. They were high level generic categories that slightly looked copy and pasted across both functions. It's not fair, but I felt like respond and recover were like the, like the last kids to get on the school bus and the only seat that they could get on was the, the one that had the wheel well in it, you know, so they're like chewing on their kneecaps, just rubbish. So they've been fully overhauled, such as respond now maps to really the incident response execution to include communication and industry accepted IR process steps under the incident 
incident mitigation and incident management category. And this can't be overstated. In this 1.1, IR and SecOps people would have looked at Respond and been like, oh, that's cute. Back to work. And now it actually empowers them to execute their workflows as they've been doing it with greater visibility and support. You'll see a very similar uh, application being done on the recover function as well, but really more hooking up kind of the IT operations people with recovering back into known good state of business operations. Really, really just hands down to me, the most significant improvement in the entire CSF. Another massive value add is the addition of a community profiles and organizational profile templates. Now this did have something like this, I believe for manufacturing in the past, but it wasn't really like super robust. The new vision is like a force multiplier. So from NIST, org profiles are used to understand, tailor, assess, prioritize, and communicate the CSF core's outcome by considering an org's mission, objective, stakeholder, expectations, threat landscape, and requirements. That's a lot to say. But basically the org profile includes one or both, typically both, of the current state and your target state, right? That's all it is. It's like, it's your current security posture. If you want to go back in the way back machine, kind of think of it as like your system security plan back when those were in vogue. It's the profile of your security posture. Now, most people treat this at the organization wide security posture profile, but you can use it for specific aspects, just like the, just the financial system or even specific threats like countering ransomware. The community profiles are really a great quick start cheat code that is created and published by a community of interest like other NIST CSF adopted organizations that are a little bit more mature perhaps than yours. And the community profiles can be focused on a sector, subsector, technology, threat, etc. Um, there is one I saw around ransomware. So you can just like slap that on and make sure that, you know, your org's looking tight for just protecting from the ransomware threat vector, which I would recommend as a great starting point. Uh, you can use it as your target profile without having to think through what your target state would actually be, right? So again, force multiplier. As of right now, I do not think there will be a 1.1 to 2.0 mapping document. The changes across the NIST CSF were massive, like entire categories disappeared, entire new categories appeared, and subcategories were consolidated or ripped apart. I mean, it was it was massive, right? A mapping could be done, but it would be like kind of quasi subjective. I would just say that if you are using a NIST CSF 1.1 currently framework for your InfoSec program, good on you. I love NIST CSF, but I might suggest you plan a three month project to migrate from 1.1 to 2.0 because it's going to take that amount of time. Depends on your organization size and stuff. But for a bonus tip, what I would do if I was in charge of your office, I would start fresh with a 2.0 profile and then use uh, mapping our current state profile. Just use the NIST CSF 1.1 implementation information that you already have just to inform the baseline of your current state in the 2.0 instead of trying to like, you know, copy and paste from 1.1 and stuff like that. It's just, just go clean. Okay. NIST CSF 2.0 is awesome. And I've implemented NIST CSF at multiple organizations over the years and have loved it. I'm a huge NIST advocate. I love what they've done. The updates have made it more impactful, more comprehensive, easier to communicate, faster to implement. And it shows the continued support and commitment NIST has to helping practitioners protect and ensure cyber resiliency. If you want to talk GRC and NIST CSF with an awesome community of like-minded supported professionals, head over to Simply Cyber's Discord server where thousands of cyber pros from all walks of life are engaging and helping each other out. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope this video has brought you value and you have a much more confident understanding of NIST cybersecurity framework and the updates in 2.0. I'll see you in the next one.